Hey, if you also a little, little spam on this patch here, where it actually this cell here had no activity. So what I decided to do, get a stainless steel spoon, but be very careful doing this. On the negative plate down on that side, look for the brown uh, interconnecting strap, which is our negative plate, which is a plate I had trouble with in that cell that was not reacting. Every other cell was bubbling but that one. So what I done, I took this negative terminal and probed that negative connecting strap firm contact with that spoon and force charged it. So I was putting 16 volts through 10 volts worth of cells and this cell was over -volted to the point it actually broke through the insulating layer and now it's actually activated it again. Beautiful, I fixed it. Well, 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 that treatment fixed it. You think I'd be very careful doing that since this is a negative plate that wasn't charging you touch the brown one, the brown lead dioxide plate is a negative, so a positive plate we're going through there. The first time I did it, I was touching the positive plate, and then of course just putting a dead short and everything. So touch on a negative plate, actually forces a power to go through the positive plate, and pushed, I've actually pushed all that cover, forced it through that negative plate, to try and kick it up the arse, kick that cell up the arse and jump start it, and sure enough, this batch is charging up well now. I took this off for a couple of seconds, tested the multimeter, and it was staying steady at 14 volts. So this batch is uh, revived. So a drop cell doesn't necessarily mean it's completely buggered. A good kick up the ass using that method, but take safety precautions, and that will get the cell going again. I might try that with this battery, with all the negative plates, because they're not doing anything. Have the positive connected, and I get back the spoon. I just uh, touch the negative plate, and I'll force the electrons through the actual punch through and get the plate, uh, the cell activated again. So, I'll just fill this back up with water. <sighs> this sub none of the YouTube which you just, just flush it out a bunch of times and try charging it, and it can revive the battery. So, yeah, let's try and see if that proves the concept. And I'll just uh, do it with that method, touch the negative plates as you can see, they're the brown ones. And I'll force the electrons through this bloody. Um, through the plates in the cell to get it to activate. The EPS chat somewhat kicks out just over 100 amps, so that ought to fix it, as it did with this one. Very careful with sparks though, especially in batteries. Got a bit of a bloody scare this morning. When that one there had a bad connection, a bloody bolt, I bumped the bolt in the side of that battery and poof, the top blew off a bit. Lucky it didn't bloody explode. That was a very scary experience. You do got to be careful. Yeah, we've got bubbles coming out. That's batch of cells revived. You don't touch that one in, as I said, because that's the positive plate. The brown one under there is our negative plate. That's where you want to force the electrons through between the um, separators of the plate to try and give the cell a kick up the ass. And it, sure enough, it's revived. Before it was holding 0 0.8, but now I think it's close to being fully charged now. As you can see there, it's going heaps now. Look at that. It must be balanced charging with all these other cells. And this is starting to get auto charged now. As these are getting fully charged, they are approaching full. This cell gets more charged now. So that these ones here getting worked the hardest. Now this one here is actually starting to balance itself out. So you leave it on for a couple of hours. Keep checking it that they're all bubbling evenly. If they're all bubbling evenly, we know that the cells are all balanced charged. Get yourself a multimeter with some um, old wire probes and probe each cell. Should have um, 2.7, 2.7, 2.7, 2.7, and 2.7 volts. As well between there and between there to test these cells. They should all be exactly 2.7 volts are fully charged. But because of the alum conversion, they're a bit less. So I'll just double check that once this battery is fully charged, which is all good. Same with this one. There you go, I could probably put that in that one there now, make it back to four. Upgrade the resistors on my yes, so I could take 48 volts. I've just ordered some more um, uh, FPGA bloody uh, type um, IGBTs on my ZBS. I ordered some back in September for some bloody reason. They didn't get sent to me. The shipping got uh, stopped because of the 
something from China. They had a big um, crackdown on lithium batteries being, being shipped because of that. And then they got the bloody order. And by the time I had to file the uh, thing on eBay to try and get my money back, the sale thing disappeared off the list as if I never bought them at all. I don't know what the bloody hell happened there. So I lost 30 bucks. But I bought it from a different seller this time. I bought the same parts but from a different seller, so hopefully I'll get these, uh, the IGBTs. So I'm making a good IGBT based ZBS with some big ass the high power diodes and everything. Anyway, I was going to put all the bloody batteries on it. We'll see what happens. As I said, doing the southern conversion, condition is everything. Had a look inside the cells on this one. And two of these two cells here look like these two cells with the negative plates kind of pushed over there. So, uh, even though this battery still tests 100%, that's good comparison. So that one there should revive if, uh, if this looks the same as that one there does, cosmetically looking like the plates. So I might be able to revive this one because it looked at the, the plates and they look the same as this one. Even though this one is uh, still 100% healthy after a good desulfate. Anyway, so yeah, condition is definitely everything when doing the conversion. So then negative plates of Lentoba. Anyway, I'll let that, let this one here get some full charge first, so I'm going to chuck it on this one. Then I'll do the same revival process to get this battery all kick started again. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.